Cheese. It's delicious, melty, sometimes stinky, and often mysterious. But when it comes to Swiss cheese, there's one question people have been asking for over a century. What's with the holes? For decades, cartoon mice have been diving into them, sandwich makers have been poking fingers through them, and cheese lovers have been debating whether they're a charming quirk or a sign you got ripped off by your local deli. But here's the twist. Those iconic holes in Swiss cheese, the ones that make it instantly recognizable, are actually disappearing. Why? Let's find out, right here, on History of Food. First, let's clear something up. Swiss cheese in the U.S. usually refers to Emmental, a cheese from Switzerland that's been around since the 13th century. It's nutty, mild, and semi-hard, with those signature holes or eyes, as cheesemakers call them. Yes, they're called eyes, which makes eating them feel just a little more unsettling. Like your sandwich is staring back at you. The holes aren't just for looks. They became the iconic trademark of Swiss cheese. Without them, it would just look like a block of beige dairy, kind of like cheddar that never got invited to the tanning salon. The eyes made it unique, photogenic, and endlessly memeable long before memes were a thing. So how do these holes actually form? No, it's not mice nibbling away in the cheese cellar. That myth has been around for ages, but unless you think rodent workers were unionized in medieval Switzerland, we can set that theory aside. The real culprit is bacteria, but the friendly kind. Cheesemakers add special starter cultures during production, and one of them, Propionobacterium freudenreichi, plays the star role. As this bacterium feasts on lactic acid during fermentation, it produces carbon dioxide gas. Those little bubbles of CO2 get trapped in the cheese, forming holes. It's like nature's very slow, very tasty bubble wrap. And just like bubble wrap, some people can't resist poking at the holes. Admit it, you've done it. Interestingly, the size of the holes isn't random. Temperature, acidity, and aging all play a role. Warmer conditions make larger holes, cooler ones make smaller holes. Some cheesemakers used to treat big holes as a sign of better flavor. The reasoning was simple. The more active the bacteria, the tastier the cheese. Of course, not everyone loved giant holes. Imagine making a sandwich and half your tomato slices keep falling through the gaps like coins in a slot machine. At some point, practicality kicks in. Now here's where things get weird. Around the late 20th century, cheesemakers noticed that the holes in Swiss cheese were shrinking. Some wheels had no holes at all. Consumers were baffled. Scientists were curious. And conspiracy theorists probably blamed Big Dairy. It turns out the mystery wasn't aliens or sabotage. It was hygiene. As modern cheesemaking got more sanitary, the amount of microscopic hay dust in the milk dropped dramatically. Wait, hay dust? Yes, hay dust. Traditionally, milk for Swiss cheese was collected in barns where tiny particles of hay inevitably fell into the buckets. Those particles acted as nucleation sites for the CO2 gas, helping form holes. Cleaner production meant fewer particles, which meant fewer places for bubbles to gather, which meant no holes. So ironically, making milk too clean nearly erased the most beloved feature of Swiss cheese. It's like polishing the Mona Lisa until the smile disappears. For many, Swiss cheese without holes is just wrong. It's like a pizza without toppings or a hot dog without the bun. It just feels incomplete. When the holes started disappearing, cheesemakers had to face an uncomfortable truth. The very thing that made their cheese iconic was vanishing because of progress. And here's the kicker. In the U.S., the FDA actually has regulations defining how big the holes in Swiss cheese should be. That's right, the government has opinions about hole size. Too big, and it's a problem. Too small, also a problem. It's like Goldilocks, but with dairy products. Once scientists cracked the mystery, cheesemakers began adjusting their production to reintroduce the holes. 
By controlling milk quality, bacterial cultures, and fermentation, they could engineer holes more reliably. Think of it as cosmetic surgery for cheese, restoring its signature look so it could stay marketable. Today, most commercial Swiss cheese has holes again, though often smaller than the classic versions. They're just big enough to remind you it's Swiss, without making your sandwich fall apart, a compromise between tradition and convenience. Here's the funny thing. The holes don't affect the flavor nearly as much as people think. Whether Swiss has big eyes, small eyes, or none at all, it still tastes nutty and mild. But humans are visual creatures. We like our food to look right. Just ask anyone who's ever complained about square watermelons or purple ketchup. The holes are a branding tool as much as a natural byproduct. They signal, this is authentic Swiss cheese, in the same way grill marks signal, this burger is legit, or froth signals, this coffee is Instagram worthy. Without them, Swiss cheese risks losing its visual identity, and nobody wants to eat dairy witness protection cheese. Swiss cheese holes have even seeped into pop culture. Cartoon mice from Tom and Jerry to Looney Tunes made them famous. Kids grew up thinking cheese was supposed to look like a sponge. And if you ask someone to draw cheese right now, odds are they'll sketch a triangle with big circles in it. That's the power of those holes. In fact, Swiss cheese holes have become so symbolic that they're often used in analogies outside of food. Engineers use the Swiss cheese model to explain how multiple layers of defense can still have holes. And when those holes align, bad things happen. Who knew dairy could explain airplane safety and nuclear power plant risk? So why do Swiss cheese have holes? And why are they disappearing? The short version, bacteria make carbon dioxide, hay dust is used to help the bubbles form, but modern hygiene has reduced that. And now cheesemakers carefully balance tradition with modern standards to keep the holes alive. It's a reminder that sometimes the quirks we love in food aren't accidents. They're the result of history, environment, and culture colliding in unexpected ways. At the end of the day, Swiss cheese holes are more than just gaps in dairy. They're a cultural icon, a scientific puzzle, and a lesson in how progress can unintentionally erase tradition. Thankfully, the holes are back, even if they're a little more modest than before. So next time you bite into a Swiss cheese sandwich and see those little round eyes staring back at you, remember, you're not just eating cheese. You're eating centuries of tradition, a dash of science and a sprinkle of hay dust history. And if your tomato falls through the hole, well, that's just Swiss cheese keeping it real. Thank you for watching.